love is gone That your love is gone Hello my beautiful angels. Welcome back to another one of my video. I'm sorry if I took a while to upload the second part of 7 minutes in heaven, I took a little break off because I was lacking of sleep. The new discord is already set up, if you want to check that out it's link in the description box below, feel free to join. Make sure to stay tuned at the end of the video for some few announcements and appreciation for salted yams who read proof my work. Lots of love. As always, I hope you enjoy the video. 7 Minutes in Heaven Part 2 Not now, Tendal. What a party pooper. Amateur. What did you just say to me? Nothing. PFFT. Ah. Uh, what's happening? They all watch the tension thicken to a whole new level as Sejo's pinch server storms out of the closet. Kyotony follows closely behind the golden haired boy, his face looking irked as he notices the expressions that the others were displaying in front of him. Oh god, what happened with these two now? They're like Oikoa and Iwazumi, PFFT. Not really. I mean I did predict that this would happen eventually. Oikoa glances at the two hopelessly. He scratches the back of his nape, hoping there's a way he can sneak out of the room without being noticed, which nearly seems impossible. I smell some tea. You and me both, bro. But shall we continue with the game? If you may, Oikoa-san. Where'd he go? We need him. Well, kind of. Big oof. Don't do kawa like that, lol. Iwazumi rolls his eyes before slowly running after the brown-haired male who was obviously attempting to tiptoe away. How stupid are you? If you're going to sneakily run away, you have to do better than that, idiot. All of the sudden, the spiker of Sejo pulled the other by the waist, earning himself a confused yelp from Oikora. Iwa-chan, don't Iwa-chan me, crapikora. Leave them be, this is none of your business. But, tch, Kyotony isn't an idiot. Unlike you, he's aware of the situation. He probably said something by mistake, so just let them work things out on their own. Mean, Iwa Chan Savoy Kora noises. The black haired male brushes his hair in annoyance before looking at his captain and scowling. Stop pouting, it's annoying. I'm not pouting. Whatever, just continue the game or whatever the fuck it is you're hosting. He shoves the setter away from him and sits down beside Sakusa with a huff. You do know that you're being very obvious, right? Don't talk to me. He's blushing. Ayo, shut up before he throws a fit. The two hosting members of the Karasuno team were giving each other glances as the scene repeatedly played over and over again inside their heads. They were thinking up another stupid idea, which was made especially clear by the looks on their faces. Maybe they should go last, Ryu. We really do think alike bro. Oh almost forgot about this. Here is the next pair for the next round. That's your cue, bro. Ugh, shut up, I get it. Not everyone has good handwriting. Anyways. Next up we have none other than Satori Tendo and Wakatoshi Ishijima. The middle bloke as ears perked up, followed by a cat-like grin slowly spreading across his face. He looks over his shoulder, glancing at Shiratora's or as captain. I guess it's our turn, Wakatoshi-kun. Ishijima tilts his head in bewilderment. What's the point of this, Tendo? It's just a game, Wakatoshi-kun. Just follow my lead and I'll explain everything to you in the closet, okay? Atsumu, Nishinoya, Tanaka, and Oikora sneer at those words. What a sly bastard. I don't even want to know. Seven minutes starts now. It's extremely dark. Yes, I am well aware of that Wakatoshi-kun. Is it necessary to be this dark? Yes, it's part of the game. What is the purpose of this game when we can't even see? It's the rules. Aren't games supposed to be fun? Yes. Then why? Oh my god, shut up, Wakatoshi. The middle blocker yanks the ace by his collar, capturing his lips with his. Time stops when their lips meet. Maybe that's just him, though? Probably. He could only focus on how soft and tender his lips felt against his mouth, how he invaded his senses like an addiction. Probably not. Huh, wait. Did you just kiss me? The ace gently broke the kiss, his eyes widening in shock. The red-haired male had the urge to face palm himself at that moment. He wanted to jump on him, literally. And that wasn't entirely a good thing, for Tendao, at least. 
No, I removed my lips and they magically walked towards you, of course. That's possible. Yep EFFT, sure wait, what the? Are you actually trying to remove your lips? Yes, I want to try it. Oh my god, I was obviously joking. Yahoo. Time's up, lovebirds. The door bursts open and the crowd all simultaneously takes a peek at the two. Curiosity kills cats. Tendow walks out with a timid posture, blushing furiously. Then, with his head lowered, he takes a seat beside Atsumu. Let me guess, it didn't work out well with your captain? Ugh, whatever. Okay for the next pair we have. Azume Nasahi wait, Asahi. And you Nishinoya. Nishinoya takes a step back, his back hitting the wall. He shakes his head violently, his voice silent but his brown eyes screaming in horror. The two hosts rapidly corner him, their eyes twinkling viciously. Bro, it's going to be so awkward. The two clearly have no mercy for the libero, and simply grin at him. Everyone needs to go, so get a move on. Everyone's waiting for you. Bye bye have fun while you're at it. Winky face. Nishinoya gives them a last pleading look, but they both stick their tongues out at him playfully. Um. And the door was instantly shut. Silence. More silence. Ah. Uh. So, ahahaha. <laughs> Asahi-san, how's the party treating you? Um, well it's okay. I guess. The older nervously chuckles. The small figure ended up shuffling towards where the Kerasuno's ace was standing, thereby bumping into his hard chest as he did so. I'm so sorry. Ahaha, <laughs> it's okay Moya. After awkwardly laughing, the taller male clearly becomes anxious. And why are you more fidgety than before? Are you alright? Is it me? Did I do something wrong? I'm sorry if I did. The libero silenced the brown-haired male by cutting his broken sentence off. No, it's something else, I guess. Don't worry about it. So, uh, your last year at Kerasuno, eh? Aren't you excited about getting out of hell? Ahahaha, uh, <laughs> not really. I'll really miss someone when I leave. But life goes on, just gotta accept it. Asahi realizes what he just said. I mean they're not dying. Of course not. I didn't mean it like that. Nishinoya cracks a playful smile while Asahi panics. You're such a softie, but your looks make you look like a man offering drugs to a high schooler, ahahaha. <laughs> Asahi half smiles, half grimaces. Not the first time I've heard that. Time's up lovebirds oh man, you, you're so lame. We expected more than that. Nishinoya glares at his friend, sticking his middle finger up at him. The two males step out of the closet, their cheeks tinted bright red. Either something happened or they kissed. Speechless Kardiana. Are they okay? You didn't get caught, didn't you? Kindechi looks away, mumbling something underneath his breath before biting his lip. Well, well ah. Uh, by the time you told me to spy on them, they were already making out. Also it was aggressive. Ugh, um, I shudder every time I remember them practically eating each other's faces off. Kindechi blushes at the few last words, while Oikora grins ear to ear, his eyes gleaming in glee. That's amazing. Thank you for checking on my pupil. And, he leans closer to the younger, a smirk on his face. If you want, I can make Kunami go again. Kindechi's eyes seem to pop out at his captain's words, and he immediately withdraws before shaking his head. No no no, it's okay. <laughs> Suit yourself, Kindechi. But don't forget my offer. Before either of them can say anything else, Tanaka begins to announce the next pairing. The next lucky pairing we have is, Keiji Akashi and Katero Bakuto. Oikora looks at the two, giving them a proud thumbs up, and they both acknowledge it by returning two thumbs up and a wink. Remember, try to have fun, you two. Akashi looks away, feeling the tips of his ears burning from the embarrassment. You got it, Kawa. We'll try to have fun. Bakuto-san, please be careful with your wording. The owl tilts his head in confusion as some others continue to cheer them on, while a few of them were giving each other those stupid glances. Before Bakuto could even reply, the door was already slammed shut. Say, Akashi, I've always wanted to talk about this to you, since you're really smart, he. Akashi's breath hitched and he felt his heart suddenly beating at a rapid speed, something that he couldn't really control when he was around his team's ace. He could feel his saliva clumping at the back of his throat as he tried to retain his posture. 
He took a step back, his back instantly hitting the door since there wasn't much space to begin with, while his hands were tightly pressed on Bakuto's hard chest. You're a bit too close, Bakuto. The Fukurodani ace faintly cups the other cheeks, his golden eyes searing Akashi's gunmetal blue eyes. He knows what he's doing, Akashi thought to himself as he tried to preserve his posture. You don't have a problem with me being this close, right? I actually do. Stupid, stupid, stupid. This was your only chance to ever get close to him and yet you blew it. He was prepared for the outcome. But what surprised him the most was the ace's next action. Bakuto intertwined his hands with the setter, their bodies firmly pressed against each other. Too close. I'm actually in love with someone, Akashi, and it's not that hard to tell. Actually it's really obvious, everyone sees it except for that person. He moves his face even closer to his, and Akashi could have sworn he stopped breathing. Bakuto. Am I not obvious enough? And at that moment, Akashi's legs began to tremble as he felt his lips meeting Bakuto's. Primitively, the setter stood there in daze, one of his arms dangling to his side. Although, as soon as he grasped what was happening, he reached out to snake his free hands around Bakuto's back. Time's up, lovebirds oh hallelujah. Fucking finally. The two instantly broke the kiss, and Akashi immediately covered his face with his hands while Bakuto ruffled the setter's black hair delicately. Like Oikawa said, fucking finally. Bakubro, I'm so proud of you. You're finally growing up. Calm down Kuru. I support this. You're crying, sugar. Shut up, Daichi. Ugh, this is so embarrassing. Ahaha, you're so cute. Okay, this is getting a little bit too lovey-dovey now, but let's keep this going. Next up, Kinjiro Shiribu. And Ita Semi. The two salt shaker setters. The two setters look at each other in antipathy before entering the cramped closet with no hesitation. You sure they have a thing for each other, Oikora-san? The younger nervously looks at the two setters who are having a staring contest in the slightly dark-tinted closet, one with their arms crossed on their chest, and the other with their hands on their hips and their lips puckered in annoyance. Are you doubting me, Nishinoa? No, sir. Closing the door in 3, 2, 1. This is so stupid. Out of all the people, why you? Thanks, I can totally feel the love. What love? Are you stupid? There's no love, TCH. PFFT, am I stupid? Probably. The blonde-haired male scoffed, squinting his eyes to see in the dark. Glad we both agree on something for once. Semi raises an eyebrow. You really have a big mouth, huh? Thanks, Captain Obvious. Now do me a favor and stop talking, yeah? It's so suffocating in here, especially when I'm stuck here with you. Oh really, huh? Why don't you make me shut up then? I mean God gave me a mouth for a reason and I'm allowed. Shiribu, out of the blue, yanks Semi down to his level, linking their lips with each other. At first, Semi stands there like a frozen popsicle, but the setter soon snaps out of his current surprised state and pulls the other closer to him, deepening the kiss. Now, you may think this one went well without the three hosts interrupting their little session, but of course they are always up to no good. Time's up lovebirds. Oh, holy shit. My eyes. This is so unfair. Why am I the only one who didn't get to kiss the person I was with? God has a favorite and that ain't you, boo. Tendao. What did you mean by what you just said? Awkward. Okay. While Tendao and Ashijima are doing whatever the fuck they are doing outside, please refrain from sucking each other's faces off, thanks. Fuck off, Oikola. Can we fucking please get this over with? It's almost midnight, crappy caller. Up next we have, Lev Haber and Morisuke Yaku, our little libero. One of these days, your boyfriend will come home with a bruised face. First of all, he's not my boyfriend, and secondly, that's not my problem, that's his. Whatever you say, man. Closing the door. Now. I can barely move. Yaku-san, scooch over. Stop moving around so much, you're making it worse. The younger yelps in surprise as he felt the libero touch his hands. This is your hand right? It better be, or I'll die of embarrassment if I'm touching something that I'm not supposed to be touching. Yes, it's my hand. What else are you supposed to be touching, Yaku-san? Never mind, you're still stupid. Yaku-san. Shut up, Lev. The middle blocker of Nakoma sulks, and Yaku can feel his shoulders sinking down. I feel like you and Kenma-san dislike me. I mean who wouldn't, ha <laughs> I would dislike my 
Okay, finish that sentence, I dare you. Shut up before I make you do receiving laps after Christmas break. Who says we dislike you? No one, right? Yes, we find you annoying most of the time, but that doesn't mean we dislike you in general. Is that supposed to make me feel better? I'm not sure. Probably. The libero draws the younger by his collar, leaning in as he says his next words quietly. Remember these words, because I'm not repeating them in the near future. Hey stupid, I love you. The door bursts open as soon as Yaku's lips peck the younger's cheek. Time's up. Ahoho, oh, oh, we saw that. This is making me feel lonely. But it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. Um, Yachi and I have to go. The brown-haired host looks at the two females who were walking towards the front, both of them blushing furiously. Wait, don't tell me that you what, huh? Are you two a thing? Yes, you could say that. We didn't want to get involved with the game but ha uh, <laughs> We were forced. Is it okay if we go ahead? I have to introduce her to my parents. Oikora slowly nods, trying to understand what was happening. Keep it a secret for now, we don't want anyone knowing about our relationship yet. I see. Well be careful on your way home okay? I can tell Yahaba and Kyotani to drop you two off if you want. Oh, sure? Thank you, Oikora-san. Um now we have Tobio Kageyama, our birthday boyland. Yutero Kandechi. Oh. Okay. Kunami looks at the other, and Kandechi genuinely smiles at him before standing up and walking over to the closet. I can feel the uncomfortable tension are you sure this is alright, Oikora-san? They'll be fine. Hopefully. The two stiffen beside each other, both of their faces having become stern and sober. As soon as the door closed, they simultaneously shifted in a distressed manner. Kageyama kept fidgeting around before finally breaking the silence that was taking over the closet. Do you still? No, don't even start. I don't want to know about your love life. Love life? What are you talking about? Stop acting stupid. But I'm not. I'm pretty sure I'm single. PFFT yeah right, like I'd believe that. After what happened with that decoy tangerine that has you wrapped around his little finger, I don't think anyone would believe that you're single. Kageyama frowns. You mean Hinata? We're just friends, though? The other replied with a scoff, shifting further away from the setter. Kageyama sighs in dismay. They both stand in an awkward silence, waiting for the seven minutes to pass by. They hover in the quiet room, and no matter how awkward it is for them to endure the bulky atmosphere, they somehow succeed. Time's up you two. Kageyama instantly dashes out of the closet as soon as it opens, and Kandechi trails behind him with his hands shoved inside his jeans pockets as he yawns. Well that says a lot. Yup, lol. Anyways I have the next pair. Hajime Iwezumi and... Oiko. Kiyumi Sakusa. The taller male butted in, giving a what the fuck look to the younger. Tanaka shrugs, sneering at him. Try to have fun, you two. Yeah right. PFFT, okay lol sure. Damn, even I can feel the awkward tension from here. HMPH. Stop pouting will you? You had your turn already. Shut your trap, Samu. Let me have my feelings. What a big baby. The brunette captain peers at the black spiky head male who was leaning against the wall, arms crossed on his chest and looking fairly miffed that he was involved in the first place. A part of me just wants to run to you and make out with you. Oikora grins at the thought of making out with his best friend. Oikora-san? Hello. Snap out of it. We have a game to finish. He's probably daydreaming about something stupid again. Oh I, Oikora. Oikora snaps back to reality as soon as he hears his best friend's voice echoing at the back of his mind. He shakes his head before glowering at him. I am not. Okay, but can you please stop flirting in front of us and get this over with, yeah? Thanks. Continue your flirting session late. We are not flirting with each other. We are not flirting with each other. The room turned into complete silence, the crowd gawking at the two who screeched those words at the same time. Really made for each other. Tell me about it. Anyways, we're closing the door now. Whatever, just fucking do it. It's not like I want to be here with you, man. At least sound a bit more excited. The door closes and Iwezumi pushes himself off of the wall, his eyes only staring into the darkness. I never said anything, TSK. Just by the tone of your voice says a lot, PFFT. 
I get it. You're in love with Oikora. The older rolls his eyes at what the spiker said. Says the guy who is also in love with one of the Mia twins. Who was it again? Oh right, one of the most famous setters in Japan. Did you just compliment Atsumu? I mean you're not wrong about the famous part. TSK, I was being sarcastic, man. We all know Oikora is the best setter in Japan, and easily the overall best player. Iwazumi proudly smirks at his choice of wording. He might find the setter utterly annoying, but he has a lot of respect for him, especially because he knows that Oikora would do anything for his teammates. That's just your opinion. At least Atsumu went to nationals. And that silences Sijo's ace. Sakusa began to sweep drop as he felt the older clench his fists besides him. The ace of Itachiyama gulps at the sudden pressure building up inside the room. I'm sorry dude, I didn't mean to bring up a sensitive talk. Just fuck off man, I'm not in the mood to talk anymore. Alright, I'm sorry. The younger descends his head in shame. He fiddles with his thumbs before breaking the uncomfortable 10 second silence. Look Iwazumi, you may have not realized this, but of course I would think Atsumu would be the best setter in Japan, because I like him. You'd jump on me if I said Oiko is the best at setting. In my defense, he is not. That's only my opinion. I get it dude. Just don't ever bring up the nationals again or I might end up punching you. It left a huge mark on Toru and I, but it mostly hurt him. As an ace I should have made that. Sakusa chuckles. Nah, don't be hard on yourself. I could already tell you did your best on that match, even if I wasn't there to see it for myself. So don't blame yourself, man. Iwazumi smiles, sighing with relief. Who would have thought he would be talking about Oikora with someone? Not him. We must be really in love with them, huh? Never in a million years would I talk about Atsumu like this with someone, ahahaha. <laughs> the other's eyes widened in shock. Did he just read his mind? Before the older can even ask anything, the door bursts open, followed by two familiar heads popping out in the corner of the door. Time's up, you two. Oikora and Atsumu are the first to approach the room, their heads automatically popping out in their views, and their eyes goggling at the sight of their future boyfriends. Okay, after another stupid commercial break. Commercial break? Just walk away and ignore him. Ah, uh, okay. We have Kenma Kozum and Tadashi Yamaguchi. The captain of Nakoma flinches at the Chosen 2, his eyes staring at the smaller male who is sitting beside him, his device beeping uncontrollably. He softly nudges the younger. It's your turn, Kit Kenma. Yes, I know, give me a few seconds to finish this level. After giving the pudding head a few seconds to successfully finish the game he was currently playing, the two stood inside the closet awkwardly. Kenma was staring at the ceiling while Yamaguchi was gracelessly looking at the ground with his hands joined together. Talk about awkward. Semi screeches at the unusual appearance of the red-haired male beside him. Since when did you get here? Ashijima answers for him. Since just now. This time it was Shiribu who jumped at the voice. Yamaguchi is the first one to make an attempt to shatter the deafening silence, raising his head to ask a question. Does Kuro-san like anyone? His voice is muted yet respectful, and his head is slightly turned towards Nakoma's setter. Kenma shrugs as he thinks about the question. I'm not really sure. Probably. It's not really my place to know who he likes, that's his secret to keep. The taller male nods, understanding what the older said. That makes sense. But he is also kind of obvious as well. The setter's eyes jolted to look at Yamaguchi's figure, well, at least he tried to find the other's silhouette. Obvious how? You really don't know? No. It's not really my place to tell, or I'm probably assuming things. I'm not sure. Kenma sighs hopelessly, before a sudden idea pops inside of his head. You know. Tsukishima is kind of obvious as well. Especially when he's around. You. What did you? Okay time's up, boys. An unfamiliar voice booms from outside and, out of curiosity, they all at once turn their head to where the sound came from. Each person in the room scowled at once. I heard from a little crow that you're playing seven minutes in heaven without me. Without us. Yes, Daishou and Hiroshima has joined the party. Guess who the little crow that might have invited Mr. Tongue Piercing. Anyways by the time I'm posting this, it's either close to New Year's. Even if it's not, I hope you angels have an amazing New Year. Welcome 2021. 
Also, thank you for salted yams, my little wifey who edited my work and will now be editing them for now, because they're such an angel. See their amazing work in the description box below, their series are so addicting to watch. Stay tuned for more.